Welcome to another episode of Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshun. Good, it's good. You right? Hi. Mm. Hi. Good to see you guys this morning. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now your beginning was good. Was good. Like, what is going on? Hmm. What's going on? Uh, A lot. Like, What's going on with share? you? No, I'm still blonde. It's not going to change until <laughs> I take this hair off. So, yeah. Okay. Mm. You look good, though. You look good, too. I love your vintage vibe. Oh, thank like, you. Mm. I love thank it. Thank you. I've been saying it before we came on set. Yeah. How have you? Mm. If you look nice. Yes. I always do. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Moving on, but on a sad note, um, body of Hollywood actress Naya Rivera recovered from Lake. The sheriff said there was no indication of foul play and no indication this was suicide. As you know, since last Wednesday, we've been here at Lake Piru searching for Naya Rivera, who was reported missing. Each day, we've utilized dozens of personnel on watercraft and helicopters with unmanned aerial systems and on shore uh, conducting a methodical and comprehensive search. Today our search teams have recovered a body in the lake. Based on the location where the body was found, physical characteristics of the body, clothing found on the body, and the physical condition of the body, as well as the absence of any other persons reported missing in the area, we are confident the body we found is that of Naya Rivera. She was found in a northeastern portion of the lake near the surface of the water. The depth of the water in that area is, is between 35 and 60 feet deep, and there's heavy brush and trees on the, the lake bed there. We know from speaking with her son that he and Naya swam in the lake together at some point during their journey. It was during that time that her son described being helped into the boat by Naya, who boosted him onto the deck from behind. He told investigators that he looked back and saw her disappear under the surface of the water. Naya's son was later found asleep on the boat, which was adrift in the northern portion of the lake known as the Narrows, when a leasing agent searched for the watercraft which was overdue for return. The young boy was wearing a life vest when he was found, and he was wrapped in a towel. An adult-sized life vest was found on the boat. I guess it's now safe to say rest in peace. Yeah. But um, there is a he, word he keeps using that I don't understand, which is I'm confident that mm. it's her body. Is it that the family members have not confirmed that that is her body? Mm. Or I don't know, but it's still sad regardless. I think the the... the it's still a bit confusing. They say a huge yeah. question mark. If she wasn't committing suicide, did an animal drag her from the bottom? Because she clearly knows how to swim. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happened if you were not trying to kill yourself? Was it an accident? Did you, can you slip in water? Like, you know, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know how to swim. So could, I don't know it anything been about. the boat capsized because um, according to the boy, when he looked back, he saw mom disappear, according to the statement that he read. And she couldn't saw swim. mom disappear. They saw a they, he was um, wearing a life vest and um, wrapped No, he with wasn't a, wearing a life vest. But he was wrapped with a towel. Yeah. I mean, so that's, you took time to be careful. And they saw an adult-sized um, life vest in the boat as well. So meaning something happened, it must have been an accident, and she tried to save her son first, first. and she couldn't save herself from the picture that mm. was painted. And um, I think it's just the, langu the language that is safe to use until, you are com until the coroner confirms that, okay, this is the body of this person, mm. right? They cannot just say this is not, but they are confident they've given all the evidence is based on the things they saw on her. They believe it's still a weird one. language to use, except I mean, maybe if you're in water for a while. It's for just, it's just dead, like dead does your body deform when, when that you happens? know somebody, a murderer killed somebody, and you're saying Alleged. allegedly, yeah, even killed. though when you know, even that though you know this is the murderer, it's that's just a term, that's different. It's not different, it's, it's just body. the same thing. It's either her body or it's not her body. It's not like we're going to until, prove or go to court to say, anyway, let's not argue until the death certificate is granted, they would still be saying. Yeah, confidence it's confident, about. yes. It's a weird <laughs> No, no, that, I've never heard that before. It's weird so, nah. for you to call a rapist anyway. allegedly a rapist. 
swear, even though you know. If uh, that's too, those are two different. Well, things. talking about whether the language of the law. The persons, I, I guess so. I mean, if, you, if you're looking for a body, would you uh, honestly do you hear people say? Oh yeah, we found the body, but we're, we're not confident that it's not the body. I, no, like, I've never heard that. I've what? never, because I've never heard them say they're not confident about a body that had been discovered. So when you now say that they are confident about a body, it's if like, a body is burnt and they were looking for somebody, that's what I was they, asking. Does was water no deform your face? Of like, it if does. You, maybe, maybe her face was. It's weird. Okay, um, moving on. Um, I think this is a good submission. It says we need to have a law that requires all governments complete um, projects started by their predecessors. We've got too many uh, uncompleted projects wasting away because of petty party politics. And this is coming from Lydia Fosson. And of course, she's talking about Ghana, but I think this also works here as well. Um, but I would, I would also not um, act like I did not notice that this administration actually um, carried on um, the ad what the other administration was doing, which is why the conversation on social media usually comes up when they um, commission a project or say they are done and then people say you just finished what good luck started, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this administration that's in the pres in presidential level now actually did um, a continuity in their plans to at least carry on the good mm. work or the little good work they at least agreed that was there in the previous mm. administration. It's interesting but you, this say, is something you say interesting. that because um, some people argue opposite that since Buhari came, he really changed a lot of things. And but I guess I like the word that used presidential, but because the people that I'm talking about are definitely not presidential. But you okay. see that they they complained about not having the same flow of mm. of money like i've heard that a lot in a lot of spaces mm. that you know he really changed a lot of things so I, i'm guessing you know there's two there'll always be two sides of course, that the would... flow of money is different from projects carrying on you know how you know the flow of money for money is just flowing flow. and the project is not being done i think that's where that conversation comes in mm. so you don't you cannot just get that money if you if there's no project mm. for you to handle mm. it's like what is even doing with the refinery there's going to be a lot of policing like the the policies that i'm reading i'm like people are not going to like this because there's not a lot of loose money like before um but anyway to the to this lady's conversation i think it's really important that we have like implementation plans i've noticed even continuity being, yeah i've noticed that here the problem isn't that we like like ideas or we like innovation at all um even these old people that are ruling us they are not completely you know empty mm -hmm. upstairs but i think the problem is continuing that implementing it making it sustainable i don't think we have that as a culture even the way we handle ourselves we don't really um, treat people in a way that you want it to last longer, or you want it to, you, you're thinking of like the future and stuff. We do that with our roads, we do that with how we eat, we do mm. like, it's a very Nigerian thing and I think that that's a very serious problem. And I've just seen it in the government aspect. So yeah, this is something that obviously we need to really start to talk about. Maybe they need to make like another type of body that just co um, um, covers implementation of, of innovations yeah. yeah i think the problem stems from um not sharing the same vision when we are appointing our leaders because not necessarily we have to but when you all come together for a common goal for us to achieve a common good for the people you would see the need why you should complete a project and not put petty politics into the good of the people so if you know that a road got started with a previous administration and because that road leads to a lot of places and you know because that road is incomplete it causes a lot of traffic in that area it causes flooding but because of petty politics you would say uh because it's my predecessor i'm not going to do it mm. then that's just completely mm. stupid so i think we should all have a common goal common vision and come and have the good of the people at heart when mm. we want to get into power so don't put politics into it so i like how lydia put it she was so articulate she put it right she was spot on and she ended it correctly because mm. she mentioned the petty because a lot of people would have wondered like okay it's not really his duty but he said don't put petty politics because we know politics is a dirty game and okay but to bring the conversation even to a more mm. i not because it's, it's sounds very ideal and I agree with it but on a more realistic basis do you think that politics will ever work without being petty like do you think it's genuinely possible no, I think they can <laughs> still be petty 
and do the job. It's the I good mean, of the, the people that matters. And, and and anyway, I'm saying, because I'm being entertained. Sometimes when yeah. they start their pettiness, but you can be petty and get the job yeah. done. Okay, yeah. so because you also have to understand that this pettiness is coming as a as a means of um, still holding on to power. They're not just petty because they want to be like if I'm if I make this party look bad, then they want to vote my party. Like it's all strategic. And in the way. I so honestly, why he said our vision has to be one. We mm. need to understand that we want to move from point A to point B, mm. and this understanding has to start from the bottom to the top. So now we can easily call politicians and co. But I wanted to say maybe we should divert it to the contractors, but at the same time they are still the contractors mm, yeah. and the politicians. So if you have been commissioned to do a project, I believe that commission is commissioned. It's not like they're going to recommission it. So maybe where the problem comes is how the money is being disbursed and how the job is being monitored. So it is now necessary for the incoming or the new administration to ensure that whatever amount or necessary amount that's supposed to be disbursed is disbursed and also they follow up to ensure that these contractors get their jobs done. And you also cannot, corruption you know, because when we're speaking of the contractors of, 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 um, when we're speaking of the contractors as mm -hmm. well, um, they take a lot of money but somebody will come to the back door, okay we're giving you 50 50 billion dollars to get this road done but we, you can just use 20 billion and let's share 30 billion so i think all of them too need to be upright and do their work right mm. so i think that's what works in this part of the world and for, with that we'll be, we're all good okay tea time continues right after this very short break Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? <laughs> oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. Minimal are you? Hmm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early, sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Ghanaian British music producer and DJ Jules has been invited to join the Recording Academy's class of 2020. A statement by the um, Grammy Academy says the class was selected by a committee of industry peers based on exceptional contributions to the music community. The members are to help, quote, build a better and more inspiring world for music and its makers, end of quote. The invited um, individuals have up to September 15, 2020 to accept the invitation um, to be part of the activities lined up in the run-up to 2021 Grammy Awards. Jews, baby, Jews. Like I said, <laughs> we have slept on Jews for a long time. Really it, I, I, feel, I feel ashamed that I actually paid attention to him when I had cake. Mm. Um, I love that song. Like I love that song. I've done a lot of videos with it, so this is well deserving. Like he has, and I think this also um, brings to light what I usually say about the entertainment industry and how they make it seem like you have to be if you are not part of uh, their big names, the video whiskey, Bonner Boy. You are not making a wave, mm. or you are not making money. Your life is not as perfect. I don't think that's where it ends or even where it starts. Music business is actually broad, and um, your talent still speaks for you when yeah. you, as, as long as you get the business part right as Th well. that's exactly what I noticed as well um, li looking at the story that sometimes and that's why it's really good really really good sometimes to keep your head down I know yeah you're supposed to keep your head up but keeping your head down in the in the in the regard of not allowing distractions or comparisons to get you away just do your thing mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you have just you know, five thousand following or whatever. Because I know this even on social media, he's not. He's not that known. He's not that known. He's never really been on the news. He's never. So I'm sure there's people saying or people who have you Wondering. know seen finish like you're not even that big mm -hmm. and stuff. It's really encouraging to me, especially if for for people who are on a journey or have a dream that you feel like other people are making 
wave more than you and people who are not in the social media noise yes. like some yeah. people make you feel like if you're not, not in that space, yeah. you're not making yeah. anything good for your life and yeah and, and said, so what stood out for me also was that somebody is watching and I, I even for myself and my journey i was thinking for all you know maybe you don't have that much clouds as you like your your competition or whatever but somebody could be watching so mm -hmm. even if you're not getting those obvious attention now just keep at it because I, as i was listening to his music as well i noticed that he does put a lot of effort into of his thing despite the fact that he wasn't getting any cloud despite the fact that he wasn't trending on twitter mm -hmm. and everyone was saying well done guy he was still keeping the same standard of good music back to back and be back diligent back. And stuff. Yeah. so it's kudos to him really Jules is one of those talented producers that just comes up with this african sound that you can't miss it so when you hear a Jules sound you just know it's Jules. so he's one of those guys that you can't take away the talent. You know he's there. You know he knows what he's doing. This is not copy and paste. This mm -hmm. is originality, authenticity. And um, that's one thing that a lot of people, especially the international audience, will be looking out for. What sound is original? Does this sound like something we've heard before? But Jews definitely doesn't sound like that. So I'm really excited about this because uh, living in Ghana, I heard a lot of Jews produce sound. Not even the popular ones that people are screaming mm -hmm. about now, like with Mr. Easy. Because everybody, I think everybody started... Um, no, noticing really. Jews from Mr. Mr. Easy, you know, yeah. he did yeah, a lot. Yeah, the song we too. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying uh, Mr. Easy, you know, people. talking from days of skin tight. And I got day about the light skin tight. Mm. And I got day by your side. You know that tune, right? Mm. That was Jews and Mr. Easy. So that was when people started noticing this guy. But think about it. Since then, up to now, the guy has just been churning out big tunes, has, and you can't just has, take that has. away from him. Yeah. So, big shout out to Jews, and I'm really excited about this. And I like um, the objectives of what this buddy is for mm. you know, making African music go global, let people see us differently, let's reshape it, let's remake it, let's mm. let it be known. The and channel whitewash it. Mm. Obviously, we know it's not going to be 100 like they say, but we can only hope at least this is a step in the right I, direction. There's a lot of people that we've that. I'm going in that movement of even the OT vibes. I know people are going to come for me for this one, but even the OT vibes sometimes, I feel like at first it was like, like a fusion of African music and the alternative vibe that's going on globally. But slowly and surely it's beginning to look like the more successful you are at really copying the white you know, type of music and then using it in a Nigerian accent that you've mm. made something. So I'm really not feeling that type of movement and I hope that this is not one of those things that will then find its way because it's very subtle how neocolonialism works, you know, it's not, they're not flogging us but they are still in a way, you know, pushing the idea of like their, their music and stuff. So I'm hoping that it's really just a genuinely open space for people to be creative and use the influence that they have which is Nigeria and put that into music. Not that you want to teach me how to be like you, so. Mm. But let's see. Okay. Shout out to um, Jews, Ghana. Jews, baby. Jews. Jews. Yeah, this is amazing. Okay, moving on. Being sexy should be a thing between a man and his woman in private. It is wrong for a woman to flaunt her endowment because it can attract the wrong set of people like rapists. Much for this is coming from Nollywood actress and um, producer Judith Neji. Thank you very much for reading that line because if it was... Um, <laughs> it's like if it, has, if it has planned this speech, go ahead. Thank you very much for reading that line. <laughs> thank you very much. I want to thank my fans. I've got all my team, my mom. Shout out to yeah. you. Thank you very much for reading that line. <laughs> because um, how can you say... Even if a woman is naked, it's not an excuse for rape. Mm. So don't tell us because a woman is dressed in a certain mm. way is the reason why a man should rape her. Or why attract, these she are people that would, that would blame you for being raped. Of course. Raped. Of course. It, it just reminds oh, me of what, that, of what that um, Lutheran, what's his mm. name, um, Councillor Lutheran <laughs> said that. Um, what did he say again? They enjoy it. That they enjoyed it at some point. There was somebody else that said, um, I don't know, I think it was a leader, a Nigerian leader, I can't remember, in politics as well, that said what you wear can make them rape mm -hmm. you and all of that. You know, we've had dumb stuff like this, and one would think that with your level of exposure, with the type of role you play, you know, and she, what is her level of exposure? Because I, I don't know how that. Oh uh, well, she looks. Um, she looks like she's exposed. Well, she looks <laughs> like she's how exposed. How do you look exposed? <laughs> well, um, when you are beginning. I mean, you know? it's been. It, I don't want to throw away the idea of the fact that you your body can you know like if you're dressed exposed and everything that 
you are more you are more visible to somebody who's raping. Not because they didn't already have the rapist, whatever. I've always had that honest conversation. Anybody, like, no, that's but, wrong. That's, Anybody that's, that's wrong, is visible. I'm not saying that you had a child that yes, was raped. Of course, of what course. was a three-month-old baby wearing? Of course, I'm not listening, guys. Okay, I'm not listening. saying that it is your fault, but what it has been proven. That you are more. That is a stupid proof. It's but well, it's proof. No, it's, it's stupid. Not proof. Well, it is proof, guys. Mm -hmm. It's that, something that we're fighting to throw away. You no, know, if I, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying that. That is, I'm blaming the person that for dressing so like that. Saying? Even if the person was clothed, I'm saying it has been proven that you are more visible to a rapist based on what you wear. Full stop. You can argue that. Back, but no, no, that's, not, that's not. That's not. Rapist. That's not the conversation of now saying that. Oh, we shouldn't. We should now take the burden of you of your sickness and then change how i dress but let's be real if you're looking at facts that's just facts anyway that's my point is not facts it is okay where where like, where can we show us facts yeah, facts yeah so i don't let's mind go ahead. maybe in the next episode you have to show us where that is but now nah. it, it, it is very it wrong. is like, it is that true. is absolutely wrong. i'm not saying that that's the reason why people get raped i'm saying that it gives you more exposure you cannot you cannot deny so you're saying now that we can actually move the rape conversation and start that's exactly what i'm saying that we should not move the rape conversation but that's what you're doing no, because you're giving doing. you are giving credence you, to what she has said no so if that is a fact like you have said and there is proof to it then maybe we all should just start wearing hijab so don't because that i have a nice house don't forget that three listen, months guys, don't go far it, because i have a nice house and then the robber comes and robs me i'm not saying that what happens to the man in that gets robbed as well but the person that has a nice house knows that they're more susceptible to being robbed. Let's have a real conversation. Anyway, Sick whatever. people don't have a um, reason for being okay, sick. It's okay if you, if you don't have to um, accept that. My, my my I watched I read the whole interview actually, and she obviously is from a different circle and space and breathing the different oxygen. I don't agree to her mindset. I don't agree to the fact that you can't own your sexuality and you can't wear whatever, whatever. If I'm going to wear clothes that are revealing, I I do practice more safety than I would if I was wearing a hijab. Like call me whatever, but I'm not in a. I'm not about to use my safety and my That's life to prove. Mm, well, I'm not about to use my safety and my my life to prove a point would have been about more why I'm. If the word rapist wasn't in it, and we we're talking about something else, but the fact that we are talking about she lost a rapist. Me as soon as she made that do sentence. you understand that she even, lost me anyway let's 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 she move lost on. every no, other thing that she could have said this. that made sense um, was defeated from but that it didn't make sense is, you can going dress, back you can to dress up when you want yeah, to dress up i flaunt my endowments Thank when you. i want to flaunt Sis, it and free. how i want to flaunt it and i don't think um it has to be restricted which is what she's saying she's saying it has to be between a man and a woman in mm. private so it's only when you're at home you can dress so if you're single you should never like ever experience or enjoy your endowments that's what that means yeah don't show your curves where okay. uh, Miriam Aka. What's Miriam Aka? Uh, mix, Misha, mix oh, I would say be guided when you're doing all those things. If you want to go and wear skimpy skimpy and you want to walk in Oshodi Market, when you know that there are sick people there and you're in a country that doesn't have accountability, don't use your safety to prove a point. But I don't think this is talking about Oshodi. I, I think say you she's people should going, dress she was really. talking more to social media flaunting mm -hmm. and not even on the way. But anyway, the time is up. Let's just go and of course we'll be right back on the next episode like to Wendy? have time is up. more conversation. <laughs> Join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or tweet at us at Plus TV africa remember you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our youtube channel la plus tv africa also send your opinions via whatsapp to 09065719 my thank you as always to go to my amazing co-anchors ife or my and if that's Lord. me and the entire production team thank you for watching plus tv africa's tea time my name remains elsie godwin please do stay safe